Hi, welcome back to my allotment here in Nottingham. I'm Katrina and today we're going to try something a little bit different. Some of my potatoes are now ready for harvest. I planted them all around mid-April and it's been about 13 or 14 weeks which means my Charlotte new potatoes, which are a second early variety, are now ready for harvest. So today I thought we'd actually harvest the first bucket of the season, haven't touched any of the others, and then we're also going to cook them here on the allotment as well. All being well, I might try two different recipes. So this bucket here I know has two seed potatoes inside it. And how do you know when your potatoes are ready to harvest? Well, it kind of depends on which varieties you plant. So if you're growing a first early, they're generally ready around the beginning of June and into July. If you're growing a second early, that'll be ready from late June into July. And if you're growing a main crop, that'll be ready from August right through until about October time. So these have been in for about 13 weeks now, which is about their time. We can leave them in longer. The foliage might start to turn yellow and die back and that's perfectly normal. And the potatoes could grow bigger if we leave them in longer. Another way of finding out if your potatoes are ready is actually to do the potato tickle. <laughs> and all that means is just gently moving the soil from the potatoes at the top and seeing how big the potatoes are inside. So let's get this bucket out and see what we've got. So what I've done is I've got this wheelbarrow to catch all of these spare compost that's going to come out because then I can use this on my borders. It's not going to have much nutrients but it'll be a great mulch for suppressing the weeds. And this is how we tickle our potatoes. So as you can see from that top layer there, they're looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is um, tip them out and see what we've got. I could also cut back this foliage first make my life a little bit easier. So yeah, this is a Charlotte variety, which is a new potato. It's quite waxy, great for salads. It is one that we can buy in the shops over here. And I know usually we'd grow food that we can't get in the shops, but actually I know that this variety grows really well for me. It's uh, reliable. It's also great for growing in pots, great for beginners. This pot is, I think, a 30 or a 25 litre pot. And it's actually one that I got from my local nursery. They were very kind and gave me some. So uh, let's go for it. Just a case of tipping it out. Oh, it turns out this one is actually a 20 litre pot. Ah, wow see what we've got. I'm a little worried for two reasons and that is because we've had a really really hot spring and so far our spring has been hotter than our summer but to be honest this compost is still pretty wet and one of the main problems you have with growing potatoes in pots is that the compost dries out so quickly and another thing that I've been worried about is scab and we've got a tiny little bit of scab there. As the name suggests, it basically means that the skin of the potato just looks a little bit scabby. Um, and it's quite common when you have dry weather. Look at the size of that. <laughs> um, but um, scab is not a problem. You can still eat the potatoes. It's just a little bit of a blemish basically on the skin of the potato. We're doing really well so far, guys. <laughs> Um, so when I planted these potatoes, I think I put two potatoes, two seed potatoes that were bought specially for growing um, in this one pot. I put in a little bit and that's it there. Can you see? It's all rotten away. That's the seed potato. Don't want that. Um, and I also put in some blood fish and bone as a fertilizer. And that's it. I haven't fed it anymore. So this is just two seed potatoes in a 20 litre pot. 
and uh, we're only halfway through the pot. <laughs> this is great. These are huge, so much bigger than I thought. Oh my goodness. Oh, what's your favorite salad potato? I, I just really love the Charlotte. It's so reliable for me. <laughs> I perhaps should have harvested these um, about a week or two ago, judging by the size. But they've actually done really well considering, <laughs> I'm still going, <laughs> considering the dry weather. I'm, I'm really pleasantly surprised. I did actually mulch my buckets this year with a bit of a leaf mould to try and retain the water content a little more. There you are, so you can see how we've got two potato plants from two seed potatoes that I planted in the pot, which can sometimes result in much smaller potatoes and fewer of them. So I see that that's completely gone against what I'd usually say. Look at all the spuds. I am so pleased with my harvest, particularly because we had such a hot spring. I wasn't expecting them to be quite so big. <laughs> I mean, for a Charlotte new potato, I was expecting them all to be like this and quite a lot this size. Not this size, although I'm not complaining. I'm really happy that they've grown so well considering the dry weather that we did have. Obviously the wetter summer that we're now having has really helped to bulk them up. Um, but I just can't wait to get them on the scales and see just how much I've harvested. So I'm going to weigh them, scrub them, and then we're gonna cook them into two of my favorite summer recipes. I love it because they're really quick and easy to make. They don't take too many ingredients and they're great as an accompaniment to your main meal or at summer barbecues. Here we are, the last couple of potatoes to go on the scales. And what does it weigh, what does it weigh? 1.976 kilograms, almost two kilograms of potatoes in one bucket. I am so pleased with that, that is amazing. Well, I've got my gas stove and I've also got the steamer that I keep at home because steaming is my favorite way of cooking new potatoes. I find that if you boil them, it's much easier to overcook them. And I think, to be honest, it can boil out some of the goodness and some of the flavor. And steaming vegetables is a much gentler way of cooking and I find they taste much better. So today we're going to steam my potatoes on the allotment. Let me just pop them in here. I do have a little gas stove over there. I really would want, love one of those Kelly kettles where it's like a little burner where you put little bits of wood in it, but I don't have one of those at the moment, maybe in the future. So I'm just cutting them into smaller pieces at the moment. And we're gonna make a potato salad, which is a dead easy, straightforward recipe. A lot of people have their own versions. Um, I like mine quite light with not too much mayonnaise. Um, not that claggy stuff that you tend to buy in the shops. And we're also going to do another simple one. Um, it's going to be like a butter potato with whatever herbs we find and pick from the allotment. Here we are. So I've cut just enough to make a, an even layer across the bottom of my steamer. I'm going to get my gas cooker now. We're going to fill this with a little bit of water, get it boiling and then steam them for about seven to ten minutes is usual for what I cook them at home. I'm not sure if the time will vary on my cooker, so um, let's get it going. Well, the lid's on, the potatoes will start steaming soon. Um, so whilst they're cooking, um, let's go get a few more ingredients from around the allotment, because I need to pick some herbs for these recipes.
Well, they've been steaming away for about 10 minutes now, so I think they're about done. So I've just got a sharp knife just to test that they're nice and soft. And yeah, they're ready. So potatoes are done. I'm going to spoon them out into two separate bowls for my two different recipes. Small portions of each, simple. Now for the potato salad, I'm actually gonna leave that one for a moment to cool down, because I like my potato a little bit cooler um, than when it's straight out of the pan. Um, so first of all, we're going to make one of my favorite recipes for going alongside cuts of beet, such as lamb. It's just a really simple accompaniment and you can really mix up the herbs depending on what sort of meal you're cooking it with. Um, obviously it works great for vegetarian dishes as well, um, but I'm going to mix in lots of butter. And this is proper butter, not your margarine vegetable fat. Um, you know, I like proper butter and lots of it. So I'm going to spoon that around and we're also gonna add some black pepper. So that butter's melting nicely with the warm potatoes. Oh, it looks so good already. And I've actually got some mint here this is the variegated mint which is actually a pineapple mint and i'm going to sprinkle that on really nice light a little bit of a zesty herb um, that one and yeah i just love this alongside sort of like lamb chops obviously that mint works really well with lamb and look at that <laughs> well that one's just begging to be eaten right i mean three second rule <laughs> that is so good so good really simple and that's it it's just butter mint and black pepper with your charlotte new potatoes really creamy really rich that mint just really gives it a little bit of a lift and um, i could eat the whole bowl of that right now <laughs> so for the next dish we've got the potato salad and i'm actually just going to use my sharp knife to cut the pieces a little bit smaller so a little bit more bite size i mean everybody like i said has got their own way of cooking a potato salad um, you might have a special ingredient that you add if you do I'd love to know how you make yours if it's particularly different to this um, but this is just what I do and first we're going to add some mayonnaise I use a nice full fat mayonnaise there's probably about a tablespoon or two there I don't like it too heavy I like it quite light um, so it's still you know quite delicate of a dish so that we're letting the potatoes really speak with the herbs and the other ingredients. I don't like it too claggy. Uh, next I'm adding some parsley. I've also got some spring onion in here. You could also use shallots or Welsh onion. Um, you know anything with that sort of oniony flavour really. It's really really versatile this dish. You might also like to add some capers. That'll give it a little bit of a, a saltiness. I'm going to use some white wine vinegar just to give it a bit of a zest bit of a zing like that just a dribble not a lot and then we're gonna add some black pepper I mean it's such a versatile dish you could also add some ham you could add egg um, you could add lots of different things I'm gonna just give it a little bit of a garnish with some calendula and there we are if we've got a barbecue we can just put in a few flowers for decoration as well and that's my homemade and homegrown potato salad. Just got to give it a good little taste now. That's quite a big bite. <laughs> mm. Oh my God. You cannot get fresher than that. It's so tasty. So much flavour. Potatoes are really nice and creamy. That spring onion just gives you a nice little little tiny crunch in there mm, absolutely delicious if you're growing new potatoes maybe try these recipes out try your own version let me know what you'd like to do with your new potatoes thank you for joining me and i'll see you again soon mm.